It happened again. Apple put out a brand new iPhone that impresses everyone, and a few months later, Samsung takes the flagship crown away from them, and once again, I wanna switch, but of course I probably won't, even though the S21 is, no doubt, a far better phone. In this comparison, I'll be skipping the specs and focusing on the real world differences that I noticed between these that most people don't talk about, including two big issues with the S21 that I haven't heard anybody mention, and the areas that it absolutely kills the 12 Pro Max. Let's start out with the look and feel in your hand. In our first comparison, I complained that the S21 was super thick compared to the iPhone and with the massive camera bump, and that is true, but in the real world, it doesn't feel any less comfortable in the hand. In fact, it actually feels a bit more comfortable, mostly due to it being a more narrow phone. And even though I really like the flat edges of the new iPhones, they definitely make the new iPhones feel thicker in the hand, which is why Apple had to cut down the battery capacity capacity to make them thinner. Because of this, the S21 actually feels thinner in the hand, even though it's not. And with that, the matte glass on the back feels a lot more grippy, which is probably why it captures fingerprints so easily, whereas the iPhone rejects them. Flipping to the front, we have a ton of differences. It is interesting to see Samsung starting to back out from its curved screen obsession, with the Ultra model still having a curve, but less than before, which does show the bezel more, but it's still smaller than the iPhone with that's completely flat display. The technically larger 6.8 inch display doesn't actually seem any larger because of this and its wider aspect ratio. So the iPhone 6.7 inch display actually seems larger. That is once you've used it for a while and the notch stops being so noticeable. At this point, I am over that notch that is required for Face ID, especially with having to wear a mask so often. And I do know that the latest iPhone beta allows you to unlock your phone with your Apple Watch, which is cool and all, but it also makes me wonder what took Apple so long. And after using the S21 with its new under display fingerprint sensor, I am finally sold that this is a way better way to go. And I think Apple knows this as well. I haven't had a single issue with this new sensor. It unlocks every single time. It is incredibly fast and you don't have to be really precise like you did with the previous Samsungs. Jerry Rig compared the sensor to the S20s and it is way bigger, so it makes sense why we have such an improvement. Face ID does have its advantages, but seeing the current rumors that the iPhone 13 may have an under display touch ID, and having Apple add a brand new one to the iPad Air 4, it seems like Samsung chose wisely when they decided to go with another fingerprint sensor instead of going with a notch. Go ahead and let me know which one you prefer down in the comments section below. Now, one thing that keeps shocking me every time I use the latest Samsungs are the speakers. Wow, do they sound good. I was expecting the same speakers from the Note 20, which are great, but no, Samsung keeps improving these with every new flagship phone that they put out. Now they didn't get any louder than the Note 20s, but they do sound more rich, whereas Apple traded mid quality for more volume in the iPhone 12s. Let's go ahead and take a listen. On top of the sound quality improvements, the back of the phone has way less vibration when listening at full volume, which was a big complaint of mine with the S20. With that, stereo sound is more balanced, which is great for watching movies, and because of that, call quality and loudness is also great. If you guys caught our hands on comparison, I complained that HDR video looked quite disappointing. The video looked a bit dull, both in the shadows and also in the highlights, where the iPhone looked very bright and like real HDR video. Along with that, the S21 would only let me stream in 1080p, even though the display was set to full resolution, whereas the iPhone would let me stream 4K. Thankfully, most of that has been fixed. YouTube was updated a few days later and now gives us 1440p HDR video, which is noticeably sharper than 1080p, but still not as detailed as the oversampled 4K on the iPhone. That's if you have good eyes and fast enough mobile data, which gets quite interesting. We'll cover that in just a bit. But the biggest difference came from a Samsung software update and the HDR video went from a flat, dull, SDR looking image to what's probably the best looking HDR I have ever seen. Highlights are almost too bright now, looking clearly better than the iPhones, which was the previous best. Take that and then add in the wider aspect ratio display that doesn't have a big notch cutting into your video, and also the best speakers I've heard in a smartphone, and the media
Media Experience smokes the iPhone 12 Pro Max. And it doesn't stop there. The new super bright 1500 nit display is fantastic in the sun when using auto brightness, and it is technically sharper than the iPhone, but of course in the real world, you can't really notice a difference in detail. What you can notice is the 120 Hertz that is now able to run at the high resolution, which is a game changer. That paired with the fast animations makes the S21 feel so much quicker when you pick it up after using the iPhone and you notice it even more when going back. Now the iPhone's A14 is technically faster than the S21 Snapdragon 888, scoring about 24% better performance in multi-core tests and a massive 41% in single core. There is no doubt that Apple is absolutely killing it in the processor space and their five nanometer chips are way more powerful than the competition but does it really matter in the real world when the chip is packed in a slim phone? No, not really. The S21 seemed to be just as fast at launching applications and because of that 120 hertz display, everything feels much snappier. And don't get me started about gaming, which is one of my biggest complaints about the 12 Pro Max. We have an insane amount of performance from that A14 chip, but when pushing it hard, the 12 Pro Max starts to overheat and the screen ends up dimming to try to keep the heat down. I had that issue both indoors and even outdoors when it was cold, and Vadim had the issue when he did the gaming comparison against the S21. So the iPhone 12 graphics are technically 43% faster in benchmarks, but in real world use, once you game for say 10 to 15 minutes, that extra performance is erased due to thermals, whereas the S21 doesn't have any issues with thermals due to their use of graphite thermal pads to remove heat from the SoC. This is a massive bummer on a brand new expensive phone and an issue that Apple really needs to fix with vapor chamber cooling or these new graphite sheets, which are said to be even better. And while we're talking about performance, I have to mention battery life and RAM. The S21 has doubled the RAM of the iPhone, but it doesn't really matter most of the time. Both phones keep apps open for a long time and I couldn't tell a difference in real world use, but I definitely could as far as battery life. The much larger 5,000 milliamp hour battery has the upper hand, even with the 120 Hz enabled at full resolution, probably because of that new five nanometer X60 modem and the new screen that automatically drops down to 10 Hz to save power. And at the end of the day, you get about two extra hours of screen on time with all the best features enabled. Now I realize that I'm sounding like a Samsung fanboy and I'm definitely not. So let's get into the few big issues with the S21 that are alarming. The first one is 5G data speeds. When we did our 5G speed test in our initial comparison, the iPhone smoked the Samsung, which didn't make sense to me. After more testing and real world use, I noticed that the S21 shows a stronger reception in places where I typically get say two out of four bars on the iPhone, the Samsung would show four or even five bars out of five, which is awesome at first glance, but that doesn't tell the whole truth. In wide open areas, the S21's new X60 modem is consistently faster than the iPhone, for example, reaching 190 98 megabit per second compared to 165, testing one after another. But the weird thing is the difference between the upload speeds. We have 70 megabit per second compared to 39. The same thing goes for lower signal areas outdoors with the S21 getting 43 down compared to 20, but on the upload side, it gets less than one compared to three. What's even more interesting is that when I'm in tougher indoor locations like basements, the S21 shows a stronger depth a signal, but the speeds are actually slower, 26 compared to 46, and for upload, 15 compared to 33. Now, I'm not sure why this is. My only guess is that the iPhone has stronger antennas, especially with this huge cutout for 5G specifically, but overall, the iPhone has noticeably better reception in tough areas, and it has been a noticeable difference when using the phone at my office or at my home. The other issue is low light photos. During the day, the S21 Ultra takes amazing photos and not only with the 10X zoom camera, which has much better quality than the iPhone's 2.5X. Honestly, I was shocked by how good the software is beating out the iPhone in white balance and contrast, 
being much more true to life. If we go back a few years, the Samsung would really struggle in this area, but now it is clearly better. And we also have a massive difference in macro photos thanks to that new 3X lens that gets automatically swapped to, resulting in fantastic macro shots. Overall, the S21 has a shockingly good camera system with tons of daylight detail, especially if you switch over to that 108 megapixel mode. Now, my only issue with it are the nighttime shots, specifically software where you can have glitches that ruin photos or at least have extra artifacts and noise that are added that shouldn't be there and aren't present on the iPhone. We actually did a blind camera comparison against these two and the results were very interesting and also very fun. So go ahead and check out that video after this one and test for yourself which photos you prefer without them being labeled. And the last issue that I have with the S21 is that Samsung is still limiting manual brightness quite a bit compared to the iPhone in order to save battery life. But I think that they should give us full control since the battery life is already so good. I also have to mention S Pen support since the iPhone doesn't have that, but personally, I'm not a big fan of using them even on the Notes, and the S21 doesn't have a slot for it. I do have the new flip folio case that has a slot for it on the side, but when using that case, it is just so dang wide and uncomfortable, even if you have large hands. And the last thing that I wanna quickly mention is MagSafe. I definitely missed being able to use my wallet with the S21, even though it slips off easily on the 12 Pro Max, and even more so my home charger and my in-car charger, which is super convenient. And of course, I do prefer iOS and how well it integrates with the rest of the Apple ecosystem. And most of my friends and family also have iPhones, so that is the biggest thing holding me back from switching over to the Samsung over say the last couple of years with all the great phones that they've been putting out. But if you're not limited by that, I would absolutely say go for the S21. It's definitely the better phone overall. And if I could take Samsung's hardware and run iOS on it, that would be an absolute dream. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below and go ahead and click and check out our blind camera comparison right over there or click above to subscribe and help us reach 600,000 subs before our two year mark in March. That would be really awesome. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max and I'll catch you in the next video.